My next guest, Peter Mangan from Kilorglan County Kerry, is the founder of the Freebirds Club, an award-winning peer-to-peer social travel and homestay club for people over 50. Now, the website is www.thefreebirdsclub.com. Now, it offers accessible way to meet new people and enjoy social interaction in later life. My next guest online from Kilorglan County Kerry is the founder, Peter Mangan, to tell us more. Peter, lovely to talk to you. Likewise, Jerry. Thanks for having me on. A real pleasure. Now, Peter, you're a passionate social entrepreneur intent on using the sharing economy to improve the lives of older people. Now, you've been developing the Freebird Club full time since 2016. Uh, More in a moment about that. Now, prior to this, though, you had a a diverse career, all of which uh, equips you well for your venture. Give us an outline of your professional background. Yeah, well, um, I I suppose academically, first of all, I did the BCom uh, in UCD and a master's in, in management studies as well there. And uh, subsequent to that, then I was working in banking for a very short while. But from there, I went to Music Network, which is Ireland's music development organization. And I was a business and finance manager there. So I was responsible for getting resources to run arts and music projects, uh, which is very interesting. And uh, from there, I went to UCD and I was working as business and finance manager for the Conway Institute of Biomedical Research. And from there... I had a few more senior jobs in UCD and I finished up as senior manager for research and innovation. So that was helping the academics effectively to get funding and manage funding for research projects, whether that's in medicine or or engineering or science or whatever. So, yeah, it's been a varied a varied career to date. And then uh, and then all of a sudden I came up with the idea for Freebird, having seen something much closer to home that I thought, you know what, there's something we need to do here in terms of... Uh, in terms of improving quality of life for older people. And uh, I'll tell you more about that in a second. But that's what got me to, to this point. Wow, that's quite a lot. That was when you were when you were working in Dublin with your father, Owen, uh, helped you with the uh, rentals of your cottage in Kerry that you saw the mutual benefits and enjoyment for guests and hosts of uh, this arrangement. How did that all begin? Yeah, so there I was, working away in UCD, minding my own business, as they say. And... Uh, I had built a house down in Glen Bay in County Kerry uh, and a bit of land that my dad had given me uh, a few years ago. And, of course, I was still working in Dublin, so I, I started renting it out when I wasn't there, which was most of the time. And through that, I discovered Airbnb and some of these other accommodation rental sites. And so I was quite successfully getting guests coming to the house, and my dad was the one who was on the ground there meeting and greeting on my behalf while I was away. And he, he enjoyed that, first of all. And uh, But then when some older guests came to stay, uh, there was a whole other level of social interaction there. All of a sudden, he was bringing them to the pub, to the local trad session on a Thursday night, and they were they were going off sightseeing together, and they were having dinners and even the odd game of golf together. And this is fantastic for him as a whole new lease of life, I suppose, because he's retired, and he's, uh, he's a widower now and living alone, and uh, I suppose his own world might have been shrinking a little bit in terms of his social, uh, his social life. So this was a whole other uh, avenue for him, and it was really enjoyable. Right. But also the, the the kind of feedback I got from the guests, and it was the common denominator was they were the older guests, people of a similar vintage to himself, uh, was fantastic. You know, it was the highlight of their trip having this kind of social friendship kind of based uh, stay with the local. And I just thought, you know, there's something here that could be replicated in in, in a way that actually really adds quality of life for older people, because a lot of older people, and and there are increasing numbers of older people. That's the thing. The society is getting older. Uh, with human longevity and falling birth rates, we're seeing a real surge in in the older uh, sec- segment of the population. And within that, you know, some people struggle with loneliness and isolation. And I just thought, you know, there's something here that can connect older adults in a way that's fun. It's around travel. It's about welcoming people to your home. It's a way to make a few extra bob uh, from the spare rooms, etc. But most importantly, it's about meeting new people and having fun together. And uh, that's that's kind of why I decided I need to I need to work on this. And uh, and so eventually, I quit my job in UCD and went full time into it. Now, growth has been fast. You you now have I believe thirteen hundred members in thirty eight countries. However, the safety and security of members has not been compromised. What type of measures do you have in place in this regard? 
Yeah, so we're very we're very conscious uh, that you know, especially when you when you have older adults. And by the way, when I say older adults, it's for fifty pluses, so it's it's not uh, so it's very inclusive. It, it's we have people from fifty, literally up to people in their eighties, predominantly in around probably the late fifties to late sixties would be the, the would be most of them. Um, and we're you know we're conscious that older adults expect a, a certain level of safety and security, and and we certainly want to provide that. So we have registration process that would be. Uh, more stringent than the norm, more than um, other uh, accommodation type sites like Airbnb, etc. So people, first of all, they, there's, an, there's a joining fee which involves um, paying a 25 euro as a once-off joining fee. And by doing that, you have to go through a process with credit card verifications and all that. So that's the first step. And actually, just to say, what, the, the reason, in fact, there's a 25 euro joining fee is because when I was floating this idea among focus groups of older adults, uh, they were telling me that, well, if it was free to join, which is my original concept, anybody could be on it, on it. And so they were saying, you know, if you had a benign barrier to entry, like a, a once-off joining fee that wasn't too much, it would it would actually ensure that only genuine and authentic people, authentic people, interested parties come through the gate. So that was a win-win. So we put in place that. Then it's a case of filling out the obvious contact details. We verify your email and, and uh, phone number, and you have to provide details of your um, address and, and other personal details. We we uh, require a copy of your uh, identification, whether it's a passport or a driver's license. You have to submit a photograph that's cross-checked against that. And uh, if you go on to be a host, we also require evidence of your um, of your address, which would be like a statement of a utility bill or something like that. And if you are becoming a host, we, we have an induction interview with you, either by phone or Skype, whereby we take you through the process. But we're also trying to ascertain if you're a suitable host, um, because we, we only want people to do it who are comfortable doing it and who are able to do it. And so there's there's quite a bit to the whole process that um, that really it's all about trying to verify that people are who they say they are, that they're genuine. And uh, by virtue, I suppose, of people being of a certain age, I think there's a lot less w risk of some of the things that can go wrong in this type of business. Um, but having said that, the likes of Airbnb and others, they've had, there have been very few issues where, where safety or security has been compromised, but we take it very seriously and we, we put in place these extra measures. Right, now, and for added uh, reassurance, members can nominate a friend or perhaps an adult son, daughter, or grandchild to receive alerts when they get a, a reservation. Now, this authorised body will uh, have limited access to the booking details. That's it, exactly, yeah. So we wanted to go that extra step, you know, and particularly wanted to, you know, it, we wanted to encourage people who are that bit older, who might be in their late 70s or 80s, and they might be a little bit nervous about it, or even their, their family members might be a bit nervous about them being on the free in the Freebird Club, uh, even though they might, you know, welcome it as a very positive uh, thing in their lives. So what we did there is we developed a buddy system such that um, if your granny or my granny is on it, and uh, they could nominate me or you as the buddy, such that if they get contacted by anybody or they make contact with anybody with a view to booking a stay or having a, a, a stay booked with them, then the buddy will get an alert and will be able to go in and just. Uh, access the details, the profile of the person that they're in contact with, and will be able to have, I suppose, a very benign kind of um, monitoring or oversight of, of the of the arrangement so that they know when the person is, is, is arriving and, and or, or when, when, when the older person is actually going and staying with the other. So all the contact details become available. So that it's reassuring to everybody involved that, um, that, that there is somebody somebody on hand I suppose and is fully aware of the stay and the trip that's happening and and so it seems to be quite popular with older adults but it's an opt-in the one thing I want to say Jerry is actually this is about empowering older people so despite trust and security being a serious concern of ours and making sure we get it right you know the average 50 60 even 70 year old doesn't really need minding and we don't want to we don't want to be putting in belts and braces that disempower them this is about empowering older people to go out and have fun and and, and live that kind of uh, a vibrant life at that age rather than feeling like they need to be looked after
So that, that buddy system is, is, is voluntary. You can opt into it or opt out of it. So. Right. Now, Freebird Club members can be hosts, guests, or uh, both. Key to success, however, and unlike the other online accommodation website, is that uh, hosts are not absent. As, as you mentioned, uh, social interaction is a major part of the ethos. Now, uh, ours is an ageing population, Peter. The lines of the famous poem, Leisure, are apt. Uh, what is this life if, full of care, we have no time to, uh, to stand and stare? Now the exactly. Freebird Club, indeed the Freebird Club approaches uh, responsible carry once it's uh, you offer solutions for mature people to loneliness, financial insecurity, and uh, lack of travel options. Now you're a, you're a frequent traveller yourself, including regular London trips to uh, collaborate with organisations to further your uh, mission to enrich the lives of older Irish diaspora with uh, their peers in Ireland and indeed internationally. Yes, indeed, actually. Uh, so my. My, my, the start of this journey, just to say, uh, brought me to London because I, ha- I had this idea, going back to my dad, etc. And uh, there, was a, there was a competition for startup ideas related to ageing um, that was run out of London. And it was called the Impact Hub Fellowship for Longer Lives. And so I applied for that, wrote it all down, applied for that. Next thing I'm in London pitching. And next thing I'm packing my bags and moving to London for three months to, to take part in a mentored incubation program to develop the business plan and all of that. And so... I, I was while I was there, I, I made a lot of contacts with with aging related uh, organisations in London and some of the diaspora organisations as well. And uh, so London is, is really is a big part of the story. But over time, I have uh, I've, I've further developed the, the relationships, particularly with the with the diaspora sector, because uh, one of the visions I have for this is to is to create a bridge back to Ireland for our Irish diaspora, whether they're, you know, first generation, second generation or whatever. Um, because it's well acknowledged that a lot of a lot of Irish Irish Americans or Irish in the UK, you know, that place they still think of as home back in Ireland, often the, the links get very tenuous over time and and despite them really wanting to take a trip back, there may be nobody to go back to there. But with the Freebird Club, what we're trying to do is build a bridge for them such that they can make contact with a, a peer, somebody of a similar age group, in that village in Ross Common or in that uh, suburb of Dublin or wherever that they, that, that they, have, they have that kind of uh, heart connection to as, as a place of origin. And they can make contact uh, and, and have a kind of an inter- interaction with them and ultimately end up coming and staying with them and knowing that there's a welcoming person there who will, who will help them co- reconnect with that place. And uh, it's something we're very, very keen to do. And we've, had, we've built some very good relationships with the, with the London Irish Centre there in, in Camden. And we're bringing a group of, of uh, older adults from the London Irish Centre over to stay in Kerry as a bit of a, a, a pilot programme um, uh, either at the end of November, we haven't pinned out the date yet, or the first week in December. And they'll be staying with hosts in my community in, in Kilorgan, in around Kilorgan, and possibly some in Kenmare as well. And we want to we wanted make that a kind of a, a, a habitual thing for diaspora organizations, that they can bring groups, uh, or groups, or people can, can travel individually, to come and stay with people back in Ireland, such that we kind of create a, something of a continuous uh, senior gathering effect that our older Irish can actually come back and stay and reconnect with the home place. Right. Now, Peter, it's very straightforward to become a Freebird uh, Club member and to enjoy the benefits of sharing your space or indeed being a guest. Uh, what is the step-by-step uh, uh, to what people actually need to do briefly? Yeah, so they go to, the, they go to freebirdclub.com. That's our website. Uh, basically, you will find there plenty of information about what the club is all about, but there's a you, there's an option there to join the club, and when they click on that, it'll take them through a, a registration process where they include all their details and they develop a, a personal profile describing themselves and their interests, etc. And then, if they want to become a host, they that's a separate process. Once you're a member, approved member, you can uh, up, upload details of your available accommodation as a host, and then you're you're ready to go. But by by being a member, you're good to travel. If you have a spare room. We'd encourage you to go and be host as well and welcome people to your own home. And just to, confer, to clarify and confirm that point you made earlier, what's really different about this is it is a social club insofar as people stay with people. There is no empty holiday homes or, or empty apartments like you have in other accommodation sites. This is always somebody staying with a real live-in welcoming host and, and the baseline is, is, is a certain level of social interaction. Excellent. Okay, Peter, now you've, uh, 
you've achieved awards it's uh, all well deserved now uh, the Freebird Club works the information is available online at www.freebirdclub.com it's an informative website as it says on there it couldn't be easier to get on board now there's a link to the Freebird Club on our website irishradio.org Peter hearing about the safe affordable travel options with the added bonus of getting to meet hosts with great local knowledge uh, who uh, will give a warm welcome uh, has been uh, fascinating I'm in Ireland often and I I'll be looking uh, into uh, taking up membership and uh, possibly booking myself in there. Peter, listen, it's been lovely to speak to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Jerry. And I suppose all, all I'd say at this point is try and, try and get everybody to come and take a look at the website and, and try and join the club because I think there's something really positive there for older adults. Um, and we'd love to welcome more people from London and indeed throughout the UK. So thank you very much, Jerry.